Hi, I'm Marcel Braun, and I'm here to check out my brand new Scut annealing kiln. It's called the Scarab, and I helped design it over the last year and a half, and I can't uh -huh. wait to check it out. So this March 1st, 2nd, and 3rd at the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas, Nevada, we're going to be using these kilns to compete for $15,000 in, in prizes. Let's take a closer look at the unit. So I designed these kilns to be the very best, most Cadillac-like kilns on the market. Starting with the stainless steel finish for the entire front where it gets hot. That way there's no, no warping paint or anything like that. And then a guillotine style door so you get full access to the entire working area of the kiln. In addition to the guillotine door, we have extra large bead doors. And they're mounted on counterweighted wood handles. So there's no magnets to fail from heat. And they're big, wide handles for comfort and ability to stay open. I've also designed it with an extra large slot underneath the bead doors to the uh, level of the floor. This allows a couple of different things. First of all, you can put a large object under the bead door and still get a full heat seal. Secondly, you can adjust lower point rest to a higher position. And this allows you to balance small parts like marbles on the point rest itself and suspend them above the floor of the kiln so there's no dust contamination on any of your small parts. The third feature, which I really like, is the center, the center door. And this can be used for large sculptural objects that are too large at their base to fit through the lower slot. So you essentially have a slot all the way up to the height of uh, the bead doors, which is generous, nearly six inches. So you can have your handle come out all the way up here and still have most of your seal intact as far as your heat coming out of the front of the kiln. Also, it's sized to be three inches wide. So you can have up to a two and a half inch tube coming through here. So a piece of 50 by five or something like that will be able to easily fit through here. And then the point rest will actually seal all the way up to the bottom of the doors to give you a complete seal for annealing. You get a complete seal at the end of the day when you're done working with the kiln. Then you close the point rest and set the program to run. In addition to having staff on staff ready to answer the phone from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. five days a week. We've also designed the kiln so that you don't need to tip it onto its back and damage your brickwork in order to replace an electronic component. The first step is to remove these, to remove the point rests, and then you remove this black panel here. Now that I've removed all the screws, I can just remove this cover plate and it brings the entire electronics chassis out to the front. And all the cords are made with enough length that it can sit out here and you can use a tester to test the different components and identify which component needs replaced before you actually replace it. And if you are totally set on not doing it yourself, with just the removal of a few wires, you can send the whole box back to Scott for troubleshooting by their technicians. Naturally, I've unplugged this kiln before exposing the electronics, but you can see here we're using a solid state relay on a special heat sink with a fan to keep it cool. And that's very important that you keep your solid state relays cool and don't block the fan inlet here on the side of the kiln. Everything's laid out in a nice clean apparatus and we use heavy gauge high temperature wire for all of the main power connections. Let's put this thing back together and fire it up. The Glassmaster 33 is the only controller on the market that's been designed by a flame worker for flame working. When I designed this controller, I had a couple of things in mind. First and foremost was I wanted it to be simple, easy to use. And it's definitely that. If you want to use the set point mode, all you have to do is press go and it's there. Once it's up to temperature, you just use the up and down arrow keys to adjust your temperature. When you're done working, all you got to do is press stop and it will return to idle mode. Now, 
With the simple covered, I also wanted to do some more complex things. So I built in canned annealing programs that are already programmed into the kiln. One's for standard thickness of Pyrex, thick thicknesses of Pyrex, soft glass, and a crash cool cycle that's quite a bit better for your glass than just turning the kiln off, but still gets it cool in a few hours. You also have access to advanced features, such as heat up rate, striking cycles, annealing cycles, and custom profiles. The Glassmaster 33 is designed to be extremely easy to use. When it arrives from the factory, it's setting, it's set for its set point setting to be 1050 and the rate to be full. So all you have to do to start uh, working with the kiln is simply press go once. When you're done working for the day, if you'd like to just turn your kiln off, you can press stop, which will allow you to watch the temperature as it cools down, or simply turn the unit off. If you want to anneal your glass, you simply press go a couple more times. The first question asks you is if you want a striking cycle, and it cues up no. Usually you won't want a striking cycle, so you simply press go again. And then it'll ask you which annealing cycle you want, and it defaults to the standard annealing cycle, which is adequate for almost all borosilicate work. So you press go again at standard annealing, and then your glass is annealing. So at the end of the day, all you have to do to run a cycle on your uh, product is press go three times in a row. Couldn't get much simpler than that now, could it? We've been helping people make great things for over 50 years. 